First bit of international cricket in 2021 for India and Australia with a series that is so deliciously poised at 1-1. The third test at Sydney. Let's look ahead to it on ESPN Rigan for match day. Akash Chopra and Tom Moody are all set to join me, Rana Kapoor. Right, gentlemen, a very happy new year to you both. But it's the same old story as far as uh, previewing Test Match Cricket goes for us. Uh, we'll start with India's team, which now we are uh, getting used to being announced on the eve of the Test. Two changes, Akash. Rohit Sharma comes in. You've been calling it from the beginning that Rohit will always play once he's available. And uh, also a debut for Navdeep Saini instead of Umesh Yadav. Just take me through those changes very quickly. No surprises, but Rohit for Mayank Agarwal. Do you feel a little bit for Mayank Agarwal? Uh, I do feel uh, a lot for Mayank Agarwal, uh, but also it's not the same old story, Ronak. Last time we were previewing, uh, India was uh, uh, nil one after that uh, embarrassing defeat in Adelaide, so to speak, yeah. 36 for night, uh, historic defeat. But now at this point in time, we are looking at uh, Indian team in the ascendancy. They've uh, uh, won the Boxing Day Test match once again, and uh, things are looking a little better, even though you're making a couple of changes, but they don't really, uh, it, it doesn't. Uh, show uh, anything negatively on the team. It's not like they're rattled. These are the changes that were in the offing. Omesh Yadav gets replaced uh, by a debutant uh, who was the original choice fast bowler. So it's only right to pick the guy who was picked at the first place. And Rohit yeah. Sharma, as and when available, he had to play. And once you decide to play only five batsmen, uh, there is no other option. You have to uh, get rid of one of the openers. It is unfortunate because 11 odd test matches before this series, uh, mm. Mayank Agarwal had already amassed a thousand uh, test runs, including two double centuries. So runs in uh, Australia also. But uh, this is how it is. If Rohit is waiting in the wings, uh, Shubman Gill has done well. Mayank, unfortunately, has to make yeah. way. Yeah, it's a fine margin, Tom, isn't it? With Vishal, it's one test, out he goes. Mayank Agarwal, two tests, out he goes. It would be very curious to see if Shubman Gill hadn't made that sort of impression in Melbourne, what India would have done. But have India made the right call in your eye to bring Rohit in for Mayank Agarwal? Yeah, look, I think Rohit had to come in. There's no question about that. But what concerns me as an onlooker and as a, as a coach is the, the instability and the uncertainty that it creates in a team environment when you have so many moving parts uh, for very little opportunity. Um, Agarwal's got a tremendous uh, you know, career so far in Test cricket. Yes, he's, he's had a slow start to this series, but I don't think you can really take too much from two Test matches one thing I'm sure that may have been uh, on the discussion table is maybe keeping Agawal at the top and moving Shubman Gill into the middle order for Viari's spot. Um, and that may have been the chance to just persevere with someone that's given you a lot in the short sample size that he's given you um, uh, in his test career and back him for, you know, into the test, third test and the fourth test and move Gill into the middle order. Hmm. All right. Let's go into our uh, preview points now. We've already discussed India's team changes, but Rohit Sharma will feature, and so too will David Warner, which had certainly a lot more batting pedigree in terms of international experience and uh, stature goes to both sides. But can they hit the ground running? Let's go one by one. Akash, uh, Rohit playing a test after over a year, playing a test in one of the Sena countries in nearly two years. Just your thoughts on what it'll take for him to, uh, to get to hit the ground running? See, it's not going to be easy. No matter how good you are, the fact is that uh, you've not played any competitive sport, uh, uh, like any game. The last game that uh, Rohit played was on the 10th of November. Uh, that was the IPL finals. And since then, he's uh, either in quarantine or he's recovering from an injury. He's barely hit the nets uh, uh, consistently for a long period of time. So you know that there is no form uh, or, or match time under his belt at this point in time. And you don't want to be in that space when you're trying to uh, carve a new niche, a, a new or opening a new chapter uh, in your test career as a test opener. His numbers in India as an opener are outstanding, but uh, he's not opened for India outside India. So that's that's his first opportunity. You would uh, assume that uh, all the experience, the white ball experience, and just the experience, the number of years uh, and the number of uh, international balls that he has played, uh, he should be all right. The same can be said about David Warner, uh, albeit his... Uh, uh, his uh, uh, the downtime was not as long as uh, Rohit because he did play the limited overs leg uh, at least some bit of it and got runs. Uh, so for David Warner, it might just be a little easier. Uh, also, the fact that it, these are home conditions and there is uh, no uh, Umesh, there is no Shami, there is no Ishan. So it is a slightly depleted uh, Indian pass bowling attack as well. So maybe marginally easier for uh, uh, David Warner as compared to Rohit Sharma. 
Yeah, you'd go with that, Tom. Warner in a better position to actually make an instant impact. So there is that added pressure that, oh, Warner back is now going to solve a lot of Australia's batting problems. Well, I think that statement's pretty correct. Um, mm. And having sort of spent time with David Warner over the years at Sunrise's Hydra, but I, I sort of know how he ticks. And he's one player that I've experienced in my time, and they're pretty rare, these players, that that doesn't need a huge amount of volume and don't rely on a huge amount of volume. And so I think David Warner's well and truly prepared. Yeah, look, there may be a, a couple of rusty edges, but I, I doubt whether that's a real issue. On the other hand, Riot Sharma, look, I've never worked with Riot Sharma, but he's certainly a special talent. But I would be more concerned about him. There's no question uh, that the absence away from the game, that the, the journey he's had to take to get to this test match, uh, the quarantine and all the challenges, I think it's going to be hard work for him. Mm, all right. Now let's uh, touch upon the point that Akash just mentioned. India's bowling reserves, as good as they have been, India's bowling, as good as it has been, the reserves will be tested. Now they're without Umesh Yadav as well. So no Shami, no Umesh. And in comes Navdeep Saini. Let's just have a look at the workload that Bumrah and Ashwin have had to undergo in this series. And Akash, it's not much of a surprise. They've done the bulk of the bowling for India in the first two tests. Between them, they've actually uh, bowled 58% of uh, India's overs. The tour is getting longer. The workload will increase. And now they have a debutant to contend with. This is a big test, isn't it? See, it is a big test, but the good thing is that there has been a seven, eight day break between the second and the third test match. So, uh, yes, you've bowled a majority of overs uh, between these two guys, but uh, uh, this is a third test. The series is uh, on the line. So you would expect them to once again shoulder a lot of burden. Uh, so that is going to be the case for these guys. Uh, the two youngsters, whatever they bring to the table, it's fantastic. It's bonus, but don't expect uh, or don't actually hinge your hopes that uh, these two guys are going to give you two fifers and this is how you're going to win a test match. Uh, one is playing his second and the other is making his debut. Yeah, I mean, uh, Siraj impressed one and all in his debut, Tom, but Australia's batsman would still be looking at this side and thinking, yeah, this is uh, this has its vulnerabilities, this bowling attack with two well, virtual rookies in the side. Yeah, look, I, I personally don't look at it that way uh, because mm. at the start of the tournament, at the start of the series, uh, it was a coin toss between Saini and Umesh Yadav. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the missing piece, the most important missing piece out of this side, in my, my view, is Ishan Sharma and then Muhammad Shami. Uh, but when it comes to whether it's uh, Saini, whether it's Umesh Yadav or all the other, uh, I suppose, second string pace bowlers at test level, I think they're all of good enough quality to make an account for himself. As we've seen with Siraj in his debut, he's he's taken to it quite comfortably and looks like, you know, that, um, you know, he's been around that scene for a while. Yeah, it just feels better that India have five bowling options. Imagine if they had four, maybe we'd have an interesting conversation. Mm. But I go to how Australia would treat R. Ashwin, who started this series better than he has ever mm. in uh, touring in many of the overseas countries that... It comes under scrutiny for, and we look at how Ashwin's gone in the series, Tom. He now has the challenge of David Warner up against him. What do Australia's mm -hmm. batsmen need to do to keep Ashwin quiet? Maybe keep him wicketless to just increase uh, his patience. Look, I'd be disappointed if the Australians aren't a lot more positive against Ashwin. Uh, I think sitting and waiting uh, is playing into Ashwin's hands, and I think they've done too much of that in the first two Test matches. It's allowed him to settle and, and dominate, and, and he's done that. He's been a big difference between the two sides. You know, to me, you need a, a measured approach, a lot more use of the feet, just looking to be a little bit more proactive so you're not allowing him just to run up knowing that he can bowl the ball, you know, on, on a spot regularly. Um, so the Australians would have talked about it. There's no question about that. And I think the inclusion of Warner also is an important one because he's seen a lot of Ashwin and he will he will lead the charge with that counter-attack, I'd imagine. Yeah, if he is around when Ashwin comes on, you think it's almost natural that Warner would make a difference, Akash, to how Australia play Ashwin? Uh, yes and, and no. I, I think, uh, see, Warner versus Ashwin is a fantastic battle. Warner has been his bunny, so to speak, when they play in India. Uh, so it will be an interesting one. Uh, I'm just considering the fact that uh, Ashwin might just be introduced into the attack very early. Uh, even before Warner actually hits the ground running and all, because uh, this can happen. This happened in the last game as well. Uh, and Ashwin with his tail up and Warner who's slightly rusty. Uh, so I am expecting this to be a good battle. And uh, I won't be too surprised if uh, Ravi Chandran and Ashwin actually dismisses him as well. Because uh, I think in the entire IPL, he got dismissed to spinners only once or twice. And uh, that was only to Ashwin. 
but i do expect a bit more aggression a bit more decisiveness from the australian batting unit against ashwin because uh, uh, if you start reading the length quickly that i think is key to play spin and uh, then you got to respond positively you just can't be sitting waiting uh, going uh, back like deep inside the crease to a ball that's really full uh, because that has also accounted for a few dismissals so uh, when do you do that when you're not confident when you're actually just trying to bide your time and and, and stay defensive i think uh, that approach must change because if it doesn't then ashwin will once again will have a huge say on this test match all right gentlemen thank you very much that's your first bit of work on in 2021 for this series big thank you to tom moody and akash chopra bit of weather around in sydney let's hope that doesn't play a spoiled sport it's been a hugely entertaining test match series so far it's so perfectly poised at 1-1 of course we'll have you covered right through the test on espn cricket for match day